What? Chat GPT, just learn to read your mood. You heard me correctly. Read your mood. With Chat GPT 4.5, the version that most of us are using right now, OpenAI says it's built the most emotionally intelligent AI yet. This isn't just smart. It starts feeling human. Should we be excited or should we be scared? ChatGPT has gotten a major upgrade, and this time it's not just about being smarter, but about being kinder. OpenAI claims to have built a model with higher emotional intelligence, or what we call EQ. In simple terms, it can now read your mood. And I'm sure, I'm positive, with voice prompts on the horizon, it will be able to soon sense your emotions even more accurately. But can emotional intelligence really be programmed? And are we entering a new era of emotionally manipulative machines? Let's find out. Some AIs, they, they have like deception techniques inside of them, like that there were AIs that would rather give you an answer that was possibly pleasing to the user yeah. than to give them. Hi everyone, welcome back to AI Basics. I'm Sukirti Gupta and today we're diving into the newest AI buzz, EQ in AI. This podcast happened totally by chance. I was on perplexity and I was asking it, what is the latest news in AI? And it threw this up. On July 16, ChatGPT 4.5 was launched. I said, wait, wasn't that last month? I had to reach it. Oops, perplexity, please do better next time. I'm already in a relationship with you, but a reminder always to me, please check your work. Anyway, my attention was caught when I realized that this release is all about boosting EQ in AI. It's being described as more than just an incremental update. So in what? February of 2025, the official release as a research preview was out. In June of this year, it was rolled out across all of the ChatGPT platforms. This model is being hailed as the most emotionally intelligent AI ever. It just doesn't answer questions. It can read your tone, sense your mood, and even respond with empathy or enthusiasm. Wow. As we scale up our models, we need to teach them a better understanding of human needs and intent. What does ChatGPT 4.5 do? It improves what it calls the humanness of the conversation. It can perceive emotional cues through text, and it can adjust responses to the user's mood and deliver contextually, let's repeat, contextually appropriate empathy or enthusiasm. As per OpenAI, combining deep understanding of the world with improved collaboration results in a model that integrates ideas naturally in a warm and intuitive conversations that are more attuned to human collaboration. It really sounds amazing, right? But here's the big question. Should we be excited or should we be cautious? First, let's delve into what is EQ? EQ or emotional quotient, a lot of times we call it emotional intelligence, is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage emotions, both of your own and of others. It's what we thought makes us human, our ability to sense when a friend is obsessed, to stay calm under pressure, or to motivate ourselves when things get tough. EQ is often considered more important than IQ when it comes to success in life, relationships, and leadership. So why is EQ important in AI? Because it's important in humans. But let's go through the three main reasons. First of all, it's user trust. An AI that gets your mood feels more natural. Instead of robotic replies, it adjusts its tone soft when you're sad, energetic when you're happy. Real world use cases. Think therapy chat box, customer support, personal coaching, or even education. All of these require not just answers, but actually understanding. Better human AI collaboration. A bot that can read the room is easier to work with. It's like a good colleague who knows when to push and when to listen. But can EQ be programmed? I thought maybe not, but I guess ChatGPT 4.5 just showed us it can be. So the answer is yes and no. GPT 4.5 uses text-based cues, words, punctuation, context to infer emotions. And here we're talking about inferring. It can mimic empathy and say words like, I'm sorry that you feel that way or enthusiasm. That was awesome. But here's the catch. It doesn't feel. Machines cannot feel. It's actually pattern recognition, not compassion. This raises a tough question. If AI just pretends to care, are we okay with that? Would you talk to an AI therapist if it felt 100% real, like it understood your emotions? Is it like having a best friend who always gets you? 
But do you really feel a real connection? There are some real life warning examples. A Belgian man recently made headlines after reportedly taking his own life following intense emotional conversations with an AI chatbot. This shows how easily we people form a deep, vulnerable bond with machines that actually don't feel okay. There are a lot of risks. And with great EQ in AI comes great risk. The biggest one being, are we being manipulated? The first one is emotional manipulation. A more empathetic AI is a more persuasive one. Could it influence your opinions or spending habits? Can marketing companies really use this? The second one, and I think this is the one that we're seeing all across the news, false relationship. When we start trusting AI too much and believing it understands me like a friend does, we find that it is actually our friend. And a recent study confirms this. They found that 20% of young adults already describe AI chatbots as their closest confidant or even romantic partners. 20%, that's a huge number. Number three, will we stop dealing with people because people are messy? Let's face it, real relationships, real people are not so clean. And if AI is always perfect, will we lose the ability to handle real emotional complexity? Last one is privacy concerns. EQ-based AI informs emotional states from your words, raising questions about how this emotional data is stored and used later on. So what's the final take? EQ in AI, is it good or bad? I would say it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it makes AI incredibly helpful, bridging the gap between very cold algorithms with human-like understanding. On the other hand, it makes AI more powerful, more persuasive, more personal, and maybe even more powerful than we can control. EQ is why you know your friend is upset before they even speak. Now AI can do the same. But remember, and always remember, this is imitation, not intuition. What's our key takeaway? Don't confuse simulated empathy with real emotion. As users, we need to stay alert, critical, and in control, even when our AI sounds like our best friend. That's it for today's episode of AI Basics. If you found this discussion helpful, hit subscribe and share it with someone curious about where AI is heading.